your basic trigonometric identities moving into unit seven. Okay, we won't have uh, a test on unit six because you know we've we've just spent so much time already on six one and and six two. We already quizzed on that and pretty much you know six three, which is covering the last of the um, the last of those functions. So we're gonna go ahead and move on to unit seven, which deals with trigonometric identities. So we're still not out of the, the trig, the unit circle family. We are just moving on to another aspect of it. And so today you're going to get introduced to your basic identities of trigonometric functions. And we're going to use those to simplify and evaluate other functions. Now, an equation is not um, an equation is an identity if the equation is true no matter what value is plugged in for the variable. In other words, the left side equals the right side, okay? That's what makes something an identity, okay? Even though it may not look exactly alike on each side of the equation, when you do plug in a value for both sides, the left side equals the right side, okay? So we're going to be looking at that and then some of our basic identities here that are in the green foldable. So let's take a look at our first set of identities. Okay, our first set of identities are our reciprocal identities, which you guys see on uh, one of the little tabs from the green foldable. Okay, now we kind of already know this to be true. Okay, the reciprocal of sine is cosecant. Okay, and so sine is, um, or sorry, cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, one over sine. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine, one over cosine. Cotangent technically is the reciprocal of tangent. That's why we're able to do x over y instead of y over x. Same thing applies for the original uh, the original three. Sine is 1 over cosecant. Cosine is 1 over secant, and tangent is 1 over cosine. Why did you say it's technically? What do you mean? You said um, tangent is technically. Yeah, co so cotangent is technically the reciprocal of tangent because it's nothing but 1 over y over x. And you know when you have a fraction within a fraction, you keep change flip. So it's 1 over y over x. You keep the 1, change that, and then you flip it. That's how we're able to get x over y, which is cotangent. So it is the, the reciprocal of tangent. And then you have your quotient identities. We already know that tangent sine theta over cosine theta, cotangent sine theta, cosine theta over sine theta. We use these identities to find exact values, to simplify, et cetera, et cetera, which we're about to do right now. So looking at the first set of examples that you guys have in your example booklet, it says the cosecant theta is 7 fourths. You want to find sine theta. Well, since, co uh, since sine theta is nothing but 1 over cosecant of theta using the reciprocal identity, We can replace cosecant theta with the actual value that cosecant theta is equal to. So plug in. And then we simplify from there. So remember, anytime you have a fraction within a fraction, you have to keep change flip. I keep my numerator, which is 1. I change the division and multiplication, and then I flip the denominator, which is 4 over 7. So sine theta is equal to 4 over 7. Now, yes, I could easily say, oh, well, sine is nothing but cosecant flipped, and you can just flip it and say 4 over 7, but I just want to make sure that you guys understand why it works that way. It's the identity that allows you to do that. Okay? Now, if cotangent x equals 2 over 5 square root of 5, and sine x equals the square root of 5 over 3, we need to find cosine of x. Okay? Using your um, quotient identity, cotangent x is equal to what? What over what? Using that identity. It's 1 over tangent, one over tangent or, look at your identities, x over y. cosine x over sine x. We're using our identities here, okay? And this is going to be helpful using this identity because we know that cotangent x is equal to 2 over 5 square root of 5, so we can replace cotangent x with that. And we know that sine x is the square root of 5 over 3. 
So can we, we can replace sine x with that. So then to find cosine, all we have to do is get it by itself. How do I do that? Well, I multiply both sides by what? If I multiply both sides by the square root of 5 over 3, on the right side, those cancel out. And then on the, on the left side, I'll have 2 square root of 5 all over, how do I multiply this? What's that turn into? 15 square root of 5. That 3 and the 5 are the only things that get multiplied together. Can I simplify that? How so? Cancel out the square root of 5. So cosine of x is equal to 2 over 15. Let's look at the next one. If secant theta equals 5 over 3, then find cosine of theta. How are secant and cosine related? They're opposites of each other. Well, well what's, what's the math word? They're reciprocals of each other. Okay? So if secant theta is 5 over 3, then cosine theta has to be three is 3 over 5, okay? And again, just to harp on the use of identity, since cosine theta is equal to 1 over secant theta, we can just plug in, and when you keep change flip, that's how you get 3 over 5. And now the last one. If cosecant theta equals 25 over 7, and secant theta equals 25 over 24, Find tangent of theta. Do cosecant and secant relate to each other to give us tangent? What two things actually relate to each other to give us tangent? They are reciprocals. Seek, uh, cosecant is the reciprocal of which one? Sine. So what's sine theta? 7 over 25. 7 over 25. It's, the, it's the reciprocal. It's the flip. Seek, uh, secant is the reciprocal of? Cosine. So cosine theta is going to equal, and since tangent is what over what? Ooh, which one is it? Sine over cosine. Since tangent is sine theta over cosine theta, I can just plug in now. So sine is 7 over 25. Cosine is 24 over 25. So yet again, I need to keep change flip. Keep. Change, flip, so tangent equal to what? What happened to your 25s? So then I'm just left with, and that is the tangent of theta. Is there anything in common between the two? No, no, no. So then we're good. Pythagorean identities, okay? Um, and if you're wondering, do I have to memorize all of these? We're going to give them to you, okay? Um, actually, sorry, I take that back. You're going to need to know Pythagorean identities and reciprocal identities for the other ones we'll give to you, okay? Because these are like your basic um, identities, Pythagorean identities and um, reciprocal ones. So, you know, we want you guys to know those, but the other ones we'll give them to you. And, they, and there's more than just what's on this paper, Okay? But the Pythagorean identity kind of sounds like Pythagorean theorem, theorem which is what? Square 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 square. Exactly, and that's for a right triangle, correct? Yes. Okay, and do you remember a long time ago when I first introduced you to the unit circle, I had you draw a triangle inside of that unit circle? Mm -hmm. And that point corresponded to cosine theta, sine theta? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this was cosine, and then this was sine. All I did was literally take Pythagorean theorem and plugged in. What was the radius of the unit circle? One. One. So that's how you get sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals one. Okay? So I, I, that didn't change. I just put that triangle inside of the unit circle and we got the Pythagorean idea. I'm sorry, I didn't. People a long time ago did. Okay? Don't blame me. I'm just the messenger. Now, if you're wondering where the other two come from, well, if I take sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1 and divided every single term by cosine squared theta, 
What's sine over cosine? Tangent. You get tangent squared theta, right? Mm -hmm. Cosine squared theta over cosine squared theta? One. One. And then one over cosine squared theta. What's one over cosine? Oh, secant. Secant squared theta. Okay? So this is kind of like to help you remember these. If you remember the very first one, and then divide every single term by cosine, you get the second one. And the second one is dividing everything by um, sine. Exactly. And the last one is taking every term and dividing it by sine. Sine squared divided by sine squared is? One. One. Cosine squared divided by sine squared? Cotangent. Cotangent. And the order doesn't matter. Same. What's one over sine? Cosine. Cosine squared. So as long as you know the first one, you'll be able to find the other two. Okay? So now we're going to use those identities to continue to find other expressions. Is this the first one? Yes. So if tangent theta equals negative 8 and sine is greater than 0, which is very important, we're going to find the sine of theta and the cosine of theta. Okay? Now, I know you might be tempted to say, oh, well, tangent theta is equal to sine over cosine, so sine is 8 and cosine is 1. You can't do that. I feel like I've been through this before with you guys. You can't do that. But I do know that tangent squared theta plus 1 is equal to secant squared theta from the identity, correct? Help me out. This is the first day on identities. I'm a little rusty. That is the identity? Yes, yes. Yeah. And what I can do is I can actually take negative 8 and swap it in for tangent theta. So this becomes negative 8 squared plus 1 is equal to secant squared theta. And if I can figure out what secant is, secant is a reciprocal of which one? Cosine. cosine. So then I just have to flip to get my cosine, which is what I'm looking for here. So it's negative 8 squared. 64 plus 1 is? 65. So 65 is equal to the secant squared theta. How do I get secant by itself? How do I get rid of that square? Square root. Take that square root. Is 65 a perfect square? No. So then secant theta is equal to the square root of 65. Which means that cosine is the reciprocal and it will be what? Can I have square root in the denominator? No. So then I have to rationalize square root of 65 times the square root of 65. And that is cosine. All right. So now that I know that cosine is that, how can I find sine? Think about your identities. I'm trying to relate tangent, sine, and cosine, or sine and cosine. Negative a equals sine over. Sine. Which which identity is that? The quotient identity, the tangent one. Yep. So I know that for quotient, tangent is sine theta over cosine theta. I already know that tangent theta is negative a, so I can plug that in. And I just found out that cosine theta is the square root of sixty five over sixty five. How do I solve for theta? I'm sorry, uh, how do I solve for sine theta? So sine is going to equal what? 
65 over 65. Now there's just one problem. It has to be greater than zero. Sine has to be greater than zero. It said it in the problem. So sine has to be positive, but so why did it end up negative? Tangent was negative, but sine was supposed to be positive. If you think about your uh, Cartesian plane, your coordinate plane, where is tangent negative? What quadrants? Second and fourth quadrants. And out of those two, second and fourth quadrant, where is sine positive? Is it the second quadrant or the fourth quadrant? It's the second. It's the second. So we actually should have used, and I knew this, I knew this was the case. I was just wanted to get the numbers out and we'll worry about the signs later. I actually want to make sure that I'm in the second quadrant. In the second quadrant, sine is positive, but cosine's what? Negative. Negative. So when we solve for cosine back here, when we took the square root, what did we forget? Plus or minus. That plus or minus. Okay? And at that point, that's where we need to determine, okay, is it the positive? answer we want or the negative and in this case we want it the negative. the negative one so cosine theta is actually a negative square root 65 over 65 which means that when we plug it in back over here it would have been negative that we would have multiplied by and a negative times a negative is a positive and that's how the sign ends up being a positive 8 square root 65 over 65 So that piece of information, it's, it's good to make sure that we know. Now, this could have been avoided by, you know, from the very beginning, deciding what sign going to be, what's cosine going to be, so we so we know. But all right, so I have a problem. Also, I was like, crap, we have to circle back to this, so. In this next example, we're looking for cosecant theta and tangent theta, and we're told that cotangent is a negative 3, and cosine of theta is less than zero. Let's figure out the quadrant we're supposed to be in. And which quadrant is cotangent negative? Second and fourth. It's the same one where tangent is negative. And out of those two, second and fourth, where is cosine less than zero? No, it's going to be the second one. Because less than zero means it has to be negative. So we're looking for the quadrant where cotangent is negative and cosine is negative, and that is in the second quadrant. Now, if we're in the second quadrant, is tangent positive or negative? Negative. And cosecant, which is the reciprocal of, is going to be positive or negative? Positive. So now that we know, we can find the numbers. Okay. Uh, let's do tangent. That's probably going to be the easiest because cotan uh, tangent is nothing but say it again. It's the reciprocal of cotangent. So if cotangent is negative three, then tangent of theta is nothing but one over negative three, which basically makes the entire fraction negative. Does that hold true to what I needed? Yes. So then we're good. Now I need to find cosecant. Is there an identity that relates cosecant to either tangent or cotangent? The last Pythagorean identity, which says that cotangent squared theta plus 1 is equal to cosecant squared theta, right? So then we use that identity and we plug in. Can y'all plug in those the numbers for me and solve for cosecant? So I replace cotangent with the negative 3. So that becomes negative 3 squared plus 1 equals cosecant squared theta. What's negative 3 squared? 9. Plus 1? 10. So this becomes 10 equals cosecant squared theta. How do I solve for just cosecant? Yeah. And we can't forget what? Plus or minus. Because cosecant needs to be positive, so we do want the 
positive version of this. So cosecant theta is equal to positive square root of 10. All right, let's look at this one. I have uh, sine x is equal to 1, 6. Cosine needs to be greater than 0. Sine is positive. Cosine has to be greater than 0. What quadrant has sine positive and cosine positive? In what? In the first one. So that means that cotangent is going to be and secant is going to be because we're in the first quadrant. So now that I have that established, I can figure out what they are. Now, cotangent is either the reciprocal of tangent from the reciprocal, identi reciprocal identity, or it is cotangent x over sine x. Sorry, cosine x over sine x, right? I only have sine. And if I don't have cosine, I don't have tangent, so I can keep that. Secant is a reciprocal of what? Cosine. cosine. So it looks like I probably need to find what to find anything. I'm going to need to find cosine. Because I need it for secant for sure. And in one of the identities, I need it for cotangent. So is there something that relates sine and cosine together? One of the identities? Sine is squared to theta. Okay, now I am going to use x because the problem says x, and x and theta are just different ways to represent an angle. So it could be cosine x or it could be cosine theta. Since sine is 1, 6, I'm going to plug that in for sine. And now I'm basically going to solve for cosine. Because if I know cosine, I can get secant easily, and I can use that to find um, cotangent. What's 1, 6 squared? So it's 1 over 36. This is 1, 6 times 1, 6, which is 1 over 36. How do I solve for cosine x? What do I need to do? Okay. So in order to... In order to subtract 1 over 36, I need a what? Common denominator. Of? 36. So this becomes 36 over 36. What's 36 minus 1? 35. So cosine squared x becomes 35 over 36. How do I solve? And normally we get plus or minus the answer. But cosine needs to be what? Positive. positive. So I know it's going to be the positive version of this. When you take the square root of a fraction, you are taking the square root of the numerator and dividing it by the square root of the denominator. Does 35 simplify? No. What about 36? Yes. yes. So what? Yes. So cosine x is equal to the square root of 35 over 6. Which means secant is what? Because you have to rationalize. There you go. So secant theta is the reciprocal of cosine. Then we have to rationalize to get our answer. How do I find cotangent? It's cosine over sine, right? What's cosine? Square root of 35 over 6. What's sine? 6. What do I have to do? Keep. Change. Flip. What happened to your 6s? So my final answer for cotangent is a 
few other ones. You have your co-function identities. These are definitely be given to you. Okay. It's basically saying, you know, that sine theta is basically equal to the cosine of pi over 2 minus theta. And you'll see all the other ones. This is just something that's helpful in the sense of what well, you'll see in a second. You'll see in the end. Okay. Then you have your even and odd identities. Because sine is an even function, meaning it's a, what does it mean to be even? That's an old chapter one. What does it mean to be even? That's old chapter one. Is that symmetric to the y? Symmetric to the y axis. And if we plugged in a negative x in and it was an even function, we got the exact same thing, right? Like f of negative x equals just f of x. Odd meant that. So it's equal to the x axis, or symmetric to the x axis. Not the x axis, it's symmetric to the origin. origin. And then if I plugged in a negative x, I got negative f of x. Sine is um, actually um, is actually symmetric to your origin. So that meant that it was an odd function. So when you plug in negative x, you get negative f of x. And if sine is odd, its reciprocal is odd. So these two are odd functions. Cosine is symmetric to your y-axis, so that means it's even. So if I plug in a negative x, I get the original function, which was cosine. And if cosine's even, then its reciprocal secant is also even. Tangent is an odd function. Because when I plug in negative x, I get the exact opposite. So then that means that cotangent, its reciprocal, is also odd. So this is also helpful when it comes to simplifying and evaluating like we're about to do. So sine and tangent are odd. Cosine is even. Okay? Let's take a look at these last few examples. Let's take a look at these last few examples. It says if tangent theta is equal to 1.28, then find cotangent theta minus pi over 2. This notation looks very similar to your cofunction identity. Okay? But your cofunction identity for tangent actually says what? Tangent theta is equal to. Okay? So it looks like it's, it's like the opposite, right? Yeah. Um, like this time the theta is negative and, and the pi over 2 is positive. So what does that mean? Is there a way I can make it so that the pi over 2 is negative and the theta is positive again, like how it is in the problem? I can have a negative 1. Maybe not divide it, maybe back Factor it out. So if I factor out a negative, this becomes theta minus pi over 2. And so, oh God, I wrote this back. Sorry. So by factoring out a negative up here, this is what I now have. So, so since I factored out a negative and the identity is this right here, that means this entire piece should equal tangent. What was tangent of theta? 1.28. So the cotangent of theta minus pi over 2 is going to be equal to a negative 1.28. So because the symbols on the inside of parentheses were backwards, by factoring out a negative, we turn it to the right way that we can use the identity. So cotangent pi over 2 minus theta can be replaced with tangent. So 
So then the cotangent of pi minus, oh, sorry, of theta minus pi over 2 is just negative tangent. Sine x is equal to cosine of what? What is the cofunction identity? Minus theta. So in this case, I'm going to use x. Not quite what I'm looking for. So what am I going to need to do here? If I factor out a negative. So now this means that to answer this, this is just going to be a negative sine x. So this is going to be a negative sine x. Two negatives make a what? Positive. So then this becomes 0.37. I think that's a better flow to it. Is that under over is that one supposed to be negative too? Yes. Okay. So last one. Actually no, we're gonna save this as a simplifying one. We'll save this for Tuesday. Because we're gonna go more to identities and simplifying them. But this is your introduction to your basic identities, okay? Again, you don't have to remember your even and co-function, even and odd and co-function identities, but your reciprocal and your Pythagorean, you do need to know. And they are used to evaluate different trig functions as well as simplifying, which we'll tackle next class.